Enchanted Bulldogs take on the Stanford Cardinal. Gonzaga basketball starts right now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Zagville, and what a showdown we have for you today. A college basketball game with national implications. The third-ranked Cardinal of Stanford with their unbeaten record on the road to take on the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who are 7-2. and two. The key for the Zags, a victory today was most certainly get them up to that top 25. Great to see everyone again. Welcome courtside, Greg Heister, Stephanie Hawk Freeman. When the schedule came out, man, we've had this one circled for a while, and here we are. Absolutely. Gonzaga's already played a tough preseason schedule, but none bigger than Stanford here today. Yeah, what a victory against Stanford would mean everything to Gonzaga and everything on the shoulders of Yvonne Egypt today. She's the best post player in the West Coast Conference. We find out today how she stacks up nationally. Yeah, she's coming off a WCC Player of the Week award after her dominant presence and play down in Texas. She has scored 23 points in her last three games. She's got a tough order, though, tonight in guarding the front court of Stanford. Yeah, very good, and Yvonne's got to stay out of foul trouble. That'll be the key and something to certainly keep your eye on today. But Cameron Brink is where the conversation begins and ends with Stanford. This possibly is the best post player in the country for Stanford. Well, yeah, you're looking at an NCAA champion, an All-American. She's a force inside and outside, not only offensively, but defensively. And then she's complimented by Kiki Irioffen, who is just off to a phenomenal start this season. As you can see, look at those numbers. Yeah, Irioffen now a junior, scored a little less than seven points a game a year ago, now at 18. It is a tremendous one-two punch for Stanford on the post. Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat this is. Number three, Stanford Gonzaga up next. We'll get you today's starting lineups. The tip-off when we come back, we'll also be joined by A.J. Howell. See you in a moment. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Gonzaga, we've got the Trong sisters, Brenna Maxwell, Eliza Hollingsworth off a big game against Eastern, and there's Yvonne Egypt. For Stanford, three players in double figures, Hannah Jump, Cameron Brink, and Kiki Irioffen. We talked about Brink and Irioffen in our open there, but Hannah Jump, one of the best outside shooters, three-point shooters in the entire country. She will certainly provide a challenge for Gonzaga today. Here's A.J. Howell with more on this matchup. Hey, Greg. You know, it's interesting to look back to almost a year ago to the day when the Zags were at Stanford. Gonzaga only had seven players that could play due to injury. And look at where they are now. They do have three players that are out today, but they have a lot more bodies that they can use today. Head coach Lisa Fortier says, you know, you're never going to be favored in this matchup. Hopefully one day, but not for now. You just got to be smart with what you have, correct? Thank you, AJ. 15th meeting between Gonzaga and Stanford, E. Jim Brink. And it'll be the Cardinal basketball to begin. Greg Heister, Stephanie Hawk Freeman, A.J. Howell courtside for the tilt between the third-ranked Stanford Cardinal and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Zags 7-2, Cardinal 8-0, first turnover. Zags take it away. Great start. Stanford really likes to clear out that middle and let their posts go to work. Gonzaga just harassing the ball handler, making it very difficult to get that ball inside for post touches. Okay, Lee Trong, here's Ejim, a long way from the bucket. She'll drive, step back, shot was short, Erie off in there defensively. Brink picks it up, back comes Stanford. The polo handoff, Brink, transition three, bingo, can't let her do it from there. No, no, no. She is an excellent outside three-point shooter, shooting 36% on the season. That's just an easy trail three as she's running the trail post there. Kaylin Trong. And now Kaylee down to 12 on the shot clock. Trying to hunt a shot. Free throw line jumper. That'll fall off short. Brink picks up the rebound. It was a good look to pull up just short of Brink. You could see her lurking there in the paint. She's one of the best block shot blockers in the nation. So you really got to be careful of getting yourself too far into the paint there with her down low. Boscana missing from the three-point line. Stanford one of two to begin. Gonzaga looking for their first field goal. They're 0 for 2. Brenna Maxwell. 
Hollingsworth. Kaylin Trong, patient. Hollingsworth the catch. Ejim with the cut, bucket, 3-2. Great movement. Maybe not the cleanest of offensive sets, but Gonzaga's players continue to move and find each other. But look at here, you can see the clear out. Too easy, there was no backside help there. Yeah, the easy feed to the post, and Cameron Brink has scored all five for Stanford. Shot from Maxwell is off. Cameron Brink with another rebound. She's got three already. Arioffin into the paint. That'll be an offensive charge. Foul against number 44, Kiki Arioffin. Brenna Maxwell doing an excellent job of getting back and getting her feet set, picking up that foul on Kiki right there. I mean, she took that one square in the chest. Arioffin out of the ball game, replaced by Brooke Dimitri, a junior from Foothill Ranch, California. Kaylin Trong to her sister Kay Lee. Maxwell from the elbow. Jump shot good. 5-4. Gonzaga claws back. And we know Brenna Maxwell is an excellent three-point shooter, but what I've really enjoyed this year is that little mid-range pull-up. We're seeing a little bit more of that from her this year. Buscana, another miss. Here's the skip to the corner. Maxwell, quick three on the way. Bingo! Gonzaga with her first lead, 7-5. And you got to remember used to competing against Stanford, the Utah transfer. This is something that she's very familiar with. And right now the Cardinal know that they're in for a battle here this afternoon. Dimitri. Great cut by jump on the baseline. Little runner goes. We're tied at seven. Quick trigger. Three on the way. Ejim. Offensive rebound and put back. 9-7 Gonzaga. Great job by Yvonne neutralizing the length of Cameron Brink on that putback. You can see she used a little hook there to get over. Brink, that pass too far. Turnover number three against Stanford. And that brings Tara Vandeveer up off the bench. Trying to calm her team down. Basagna goes out, replaced by number 32, Janaya Harrell. Again, Maxwell. Oh, what a release. The quickest in college basketball. Maxwell with two threes. Gonzaga's largest lead. She is looking for her shot today. That, like you said, Greg, that was so quick. She got her feet set, and it was off. Brink to the corner. And now Stanford will move it around. Dimitri three is up. Boy, that shot brought rain. Brooke Dimitri. Big-time answer right there by Dimitri. Stanford now two of three from behind the line. Gonzaga two of four. And it's a one possession game at 12 10. Egypt. Kaylee at the free throw line steps in, missed it, tip back. Oh. Egypt. How about that clever little play? What awareness. Recognizing Yvonne was right there and just gave her the little tip. And Brink. Tried to get the seal. The pass was off the line. And five turnovers now. Actually, four turnovers against Stanford. And it's Gonzaga Bowl. And we talked to Coach Vandeveer before the game, and she knew coming in that this was going to be a tough, good challenge for them. She complimented Coach Fortier on how well her teams are coached and executed, and they have come out looking really sharp so far. She said that this is as tough a challenge as they've had all year, and We'll talk about Stanford's schedule here in a moment. Egypt from the mid-range. Gonzaga up by six. And, and this is exactly what Gonzaga wanted to do. It's not just a one person has to take over. They are doing this as a team. They are working really well together. We've seen Stanford throw a few miscues inside to their posts. Um, and that's not normally what happens. So they're just doing a really great job on both ends right now. Pass was kicked by Egypt. It'll be Stanford basketball when we come back. 4.45 to go in this opening quarter. Gonzaga off to a good start, up by six on number three, Stanford. If you're Gonzaga, you got to stick together. And all the games that they've played against Stanford, the ones that have been the closest or the ones they have won, they've stuck together. Not just one person has gone off. And then you got to win the boards. I mean, you're looking at a Stanford team that's 
almost 23 plus rebound margin. That's number one in the nation. You've got to keep them off the boards. And then limit those post touches. We talked about how powerful Brink and Erie often are inside. Just don't let them touch it. And that starts with ball pressure and just denying the pass into the post. And right now, Stanford with those four turnovers has led to seven points for Gonzaga. That's the difference in the game. Yes. Polo inside left hand gets the fortuitous roll and it's 16-12. And Lipolo only averaging 3.6 3 points a game. She's really the distributor on this team, but I like it that she came out. The, there was plenty of room there in the paint. Great, strong, aggressive drive. Maxwell. Hybens the catch. Fought through Iriopin and scored 18-12. Maude Hybens off the bench. She'll be a key factor today. She is. She brings a lot of strength and size for Gonzaga. Apollo turning down the shot. Harrell will drive. Left hand won't go. Egypt had it. Zags all over the floor. Back comes Gonzaga. Maxwell, quick trigger. Mid-range, short. Hyben runs down the loose rebound and dumps it in. She's got four. Gonzaga's up by eight. Callie Stokes, number 10 on the floor for Gonzaga. Here's a foul away from the ball. This will be on Maud Hybens, I believe, number five. An eerie often just down low working for position, and she's excellent at that. At establishing early position, but then continuing to work for that. And you know, you look at Uriofen and Mott go to get the, I mean, that's, those are some big, strong, powerful women down there battling it out. Yeah, Gonzaga has options to defend that post. Hollingsworth in there with Hybens. Here's Brink. Caught the ball, creates space, scores, and a chance for three. And you see the emotion from Cameron Brink. This is one of the best players in the entire country. Yeah, and you see exactly why you just can't let her catch the ball. You can't let her get that deep. It's just too easy. She's shooting 58% from the floor. Two-time All-American. Only Caitlin Clark and Elizabeth Kitley can say that. Mm -hmm. 37 double-doubles in her career. Five this year. Two, or actually has a one triple-double. And nine times in her career, she's been the player of the week in the Pac-12. Only Shanae Ogumake and Sabrina Unescu have done that. Well, yeah, and then you look at, you think, oh, maybe we can foul her and send her to the free throw line. No, no, no. no. She's shooting 96%. That's six in the nation. Kaylee Trong trying to create some space. Here's Stokes. But looking right into Cameron Brink. That's their little number zero on the floor. Junior from England. And there's a foul on that far side. This will go against Courtney Ogden, the freshman from Atlanta, Georgia. That's her first, team second. Quite a start here this afternoon between number three, Stanford, and Gonzaga. Trongs jump shot. The three is good. Gonzaga. Three of five from downtown. Yeah, you gotta love the start, and then you gotta love the atmosphere you hear playing in front of a sold-out crowd. This is awesome. And a jump, picked up her dribble. There's Cameron Brink. Aguera, Nunu Aguera, number three on the floor for Stanford, down to eight on the shot clock. Brink wanting the ball. Here's Aguera on the drive, got to get it up, didn't do it. Turnover number five on Stanford, or was there a foul? Shot clock violation goes to GU. Great defensive effort, great defensive effort. Team effort, coming over, helping out. Ogden out of the game for Stanford. Buzgana checks in, so does number 21, Brooke Dimitri. Aguera going out for Tara Vanderveer. Gonzaga up by eight with the ball. They're shooting 10 of 16 to start 62%. Stanford six of nine, 67%. And the turnover. That's the first against GU. And that is a statistic we will watch evolve throughout this game. So often these games are won and lost by the team 
that can take care of it best. It's Stanford that's given Gonzaga more opportunities in this opening quarter. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Taking care of the ball and then, like I said, the battle of the boards too. Um, getting yourself those extra opportunities. Gonzaga already has seven more shots than make that six more shots than Stanford. Boy, you got to stop the ball there. Mm -hmm. Chloe Clardy able to go all the way to the rim and to end and it's 23 17 clardy with her first bucket and it's back-to-back -back turnovers for gonzaga no they're saying that was off of a cardinal they may have gotten that one wrong that ball just looked like it was it, drop kick it kind of looked like it went off the strong foot didn't it here's Giovanni jim hollingsworth Strong three-pointer. Great box out by jump there on Little. Back comes Stanford. They'll push the pace. Clardy and a jump. Little got a hand on that shot. Back comes Gonzaga. Chance to build on the six-point lead. Brenna Maxwell. Got to watch her. She'll pull the trigger. Each of them can't quite get to that pass. The pick and roll creates the turnover. And Gonzaga just looks a little more rushed than they have I been. Agree. Uh, th these last few possessions just rough, and it's uh, rushed and it's turned into turnovers for them. Back-to-back -back possessions with turnovers for Gonzaga gives Bosgana and Stanford another chance, but there's Little with another block. And now it's the Zags that will push it. Well, you gotta love Esther Little's energy defensively here. She's blocked two blocks. She may not come in and put a lot of points on the board for Gonzaga, but her length is so important defensively. Ten on the shot clock, 35 to play. High low. Hollingsworth with the catch, but not a good finish. Back comes Stanford. Down by six. This is Clardy. Trying to get the ball to the post. Brink wanting it, Egypt fronting the post right now. And just look at Gonzaga, how intent they are with that post down low. And if you've got Clardy and other Stanford Cardinal knocking down those outside shots, that's going to open up the paint for those bigs down low. And Clardy came into this game just one of 12 this season from downtown. That's her second make. Little contact there by Clardy. Strong looks at the official, and that's how the first quarter ends. An up and down affair between number three Stanford and Gonzaga. The Cardinals shot 61.5%, Gonzaga 52.6. Holy barrage of offense. Zags up by three. We go to the second when we come back. A broadcast brought to you by Arby's, your delicious neighborhood meat cracker. Stop by Arby's today. Arby's, we have the meats. Fast start for both. Stanford and Gonzaga this afternoon the McCarthy Athletic Center Gonzaga ended that first quarter with a couple of turnovers mm -hmm. yeah and I really just felt like towards the end there they started rushing a little bit more Gonzaga will play at a fast pace but it was just it, w it was just different a different kind of pace rushed and um, so I think this break will be good I think they'll settle back into it and kind of get back to their pace and not so much that rush pace Yvonne Ejim already with eight points. So does Brenna Maxwell. Maxwell to the post. Skip out. Hollingsworth the drive all the way to the rim. And drops it through. Hollingsworth with her first field goal. So we talked about how Erie often compliments Brink. Well, Hollingsworth and Ejim have played together for a really long time. And they really compliment. I like Eliza. She can do a little bit of everything. She can shoot outside. She can drive it. Um, pretty patient out there. And just takes what's given to her. Clardy. Zags are leaving her open from behind the three. She buried one a moment ago. Lapolo bounce. Here's Iriopin over Ejim. Shot long. Yvonne the rebound. Ejim with her fourth. And if you look at that rebound, you saw four white jerseys going up to one black jersey out there. So important. Another touch pass. And Kaylee Trung to Hollingsworth. Got her own miss. And in the air, the little touch. Creates the foul and free throws. That's beautiful. <laughs> Watch her. Here. Just ISO her. Couple times she's stuck in there. Brink still got a hand on that shot. And 
Kaylee's got to give it up. She knows that Cameron Brink is right there with 327 career blocks coming in. Yeah. Yeah, you're looking at the fourth leader, fourth in the nation at block shots per game at 3.8. Eliza Hollingsworth now with three points, one rebound, one assist. Graduate player from Melbourne, Australia. Gonzaga now back in front by seven. Lapolo, Pascana, near side, trapped on the corner. And the possession arrow favors Stanford, but you see the opportunistic defense of Gonzaga. Mm-hmm. They're pinning the ball on the sideline. Both of these teams are so smart. They scout the, their opponents so well, and they are doing a great job defensively here, making the right reads, when to close in that trap right there. Elena Buscana to the post, catch by Dimitri. Turn around, soft touch, pays off. 27-22. Keep in mind, this is a Stanford team already with victories against Mm -hmm. number nine, Indiana, number 13, Florida State. But more impressive was the way they won those games. 96-64 against Indiana, Mm 100-75 against the Seminoles. And Tron. Yeah, and in that game against Florida State, they had 31 assists on 37 makes. So their ability to share the ball is phenomenal. Cameron Brink. One of the foul screams at the official. But Cameron Brink right now getting whatever she wants. She's into double digits. On four of four, she's got five rebounds. She scores 19.6 a game as the shot from Maxwell is off. Back comes Stanford, but more on Brink. 19.6 a game. Mm-hmm. She plays about 23 yeah. minutes a game. Right? Yeah. She's putting up these crazy numbers and in 23 minutes, just barely over half the game. A.J. Howell's got more on the great Cameron Brink. Yeah, guys, I talked to Coach Fortier about Brink earlier today, and she said, you know, obviously every time she gets the ball, she wants to score. It's so easy if you lose focus, you're in bad position, she scores. You're not paying attention, late foul, she scores, and obviously loves to rebound. That's why a fast start is so important for the Zags, since Brink doesn't play as many minutes and makes an impact early, and that's kind of what we're seeing today. It is. Thank you, A.J. Six turnovers now. The Polo's foot slid across the floor. The official was right there. Gonzaga has taken those six Stanford turnovers and created seven points. Right now they lead by five. Maxwell, the three. Knocked to the floor, no whistle. Brink, another rebound. And a jump to the post. Aguera back to Cameron Brink. Hollingsworth out there. And now Lopolo will reset it for the Cardinal. Brink. Spins and drives from that high post and pins the foul on Eliza Hollingsworth. That's her second. So both Hyvins and Hollingsworth with two personals for Gonzaga. Yeah, and we talked about the height advantage. That's that's going to be tough because Hollingsworth and yeah, just one on Hollingsworth. Okay, okay, all right, yeah. But we just talked about the the height advantage, and when you've got your two tallest players picking up those fouls, you got to be really careful because you need you need them out there on the floor. Maxwell, the tip, Caitlin Tron. Oh, oh, what a feed! Yvonne Jim running the floor, the lay in. Did you see Yvonne's face? Yes. That she was pumped. Talk about rewarding your big for running the floor. But the vision to make that pass, E. Jim was not necessarily open till the last moment you hear the crowd's displeasure with the foul call at the other end but Egypt now with 10. Look at this, this pass led, she knew where Egypt was going to be, she didn't pass to Egypt, she passed to the space where Egypt was going to be and talk about making it easy, Egypt didn't have to dribble the ball, it was right in rhythm go right up. Coach Fortier not happy with that call on Eliza Hollingsworth that is her second foul now as Clardy fires another three. Off loose ball. Battle won by Aguera. Another chance for Stanford. And Hannah Jump makes him pay. And that is Hannah Jump and a hand bucket right there. Yeah, you can't let her get going. She shoots about 40% behind the three-point line. And when she gets going, so does the Cardinal. Brenna Maxwell now with 10. And a quick bucket. Kiki at the other end. 
And it's 33-29. Iriafin now with her first field goal. Maxwell, here's Ichim. Kaylin Trong has it poked out of play. Possession remains with the Zags. Brooke Dimitri goes out. She's replaced by Courtney Ogden. Maxwell will inbound for Gonzaga. Zags 4 of 7 shooting this quarter. So is Stanford. Kaylin Trong into the paint. Here he often closed it down. Feed to the post. Ejim is fouled by Clardy or jump. This will go against number 13, Chloe Clardy. And I really think Gonzaga was lucky there. Jump was reading that off defense help, and she was coming over. Freshman Naya Ojuku on the floor right now for GU. Maxwell runs down the loose ball. She'll fire a three. Bingo! Brenna Maxwell in third. She's got 13. And she leads all scores here this afternoon. Maxwell now three of six from behind that three-point line. We have two of the best three-point shooters in the entire country in this game. Ogden, the drive, and the kiss off the glass. 36-31, deflection, great catch, but then the turnover. Great job by Ojuku to get back, but threw it right to a Cardinal. Turnover number three for GU. Egypt tied her up. It'll be Gonzaga basketball when we come back. Yvonne Egypt, great anticipation on that pass. 4.53 to play in this first half. Zags up by five. Gonzaga coverage of the game brought to you by Primera, proud partner of Gonzaga basketball. How about this highlight? Kayla oh, Drone. Look at, look at Yvonne. She just puts her head down, and I'm not even sure how Lee saw that. that was that Lee or Lynn? Lynn. Sorry, Lynn. And you can see she was behind Brink, but the vision of the point guard. That's why you got to love your point guards. And Yvonne busting through, but to get down there and get him rewarded with that pass, that was phenomenal. And credit to Gonzaga. They're protecting home court. Number three, Stanford. Let's come in here, 8-0. This is number three, Stanford, with victories against number nine, Indiana, number 13, Florida State. I don't know what Duke was ranked when they played then. They won in overtime, and right now, Gonzaga has come out here and punched them right in the nose. They really have, and Gonzaga wanted that. That's how they wanted to start the game. They didn't want to fall behind and have to dig themselves out of a hole, and this has been... Just so much fun to watch how well they are playing with each other. Not, we knew Gonzaga could play offense. I mean, look, they, they score over 80 points a game, right? It was going to be on the defensive end. If they could play together as a unit and stick to the scout and know who do you help off of, obviously Brink and Erie often draw so much attention. So how do you help off and who do you help off with? And so far, they've done a really great job of following that scout. And it's Gonzaga right now with a two-rebound advantage over this Stanford team with Kiki Iriafin and Cameron Brink on the post. Zags up by five with the ball. Here's Yvonne Ejim leading all. Actually, not leading all. She's got ten. Brenna Maxwell leading all scores with 13. Here's Stokes trying to get it low. Maxwell the catch. Or I'm sorry, Yvonne Ejim the catch. She is fouled and will shoot free throws. Well, good for you. Yvonne had jumped down on her on that switch, jump a little bit shorter down there, and so a nice job finding your post. Ejim, a really good free throw shooter as well, 25 of 28 on the season. These are first of the day. Extends Gonzaga's lead to six. But you can see this is where Gonzaga goes smaller. Now you have Callie Stokes listed at 5'11". She's got a big task of playing down there. Gonzaga coming out in this little three-quarter trap. You can see using the length of Esther Little at the top of it. Here's Ogden. Here he often. And a jump battling and a travel. Kiki. 
Picked up that pivot foot. Another turnover against Stanford. That's eight in this opening half. Dara Vanderveer, a lot to talk about with her team at halftime. She's not going to like the fact they're getting out-rebounded. And I know these turnovers will drive any coach crazy. I mean, just on the year, Stanford's averaging 12.3 turnovers. They're way surpassing that on in this game. Egypt calling for the ball. She turns on Erie off and now goes to work. Got to the left hand, left it short. Kiki trying to control the rebound. Three zags on top of her. And possession arrow will give it to the Cardinal. Well, look, Duke and South Carolina played earlier today. Yeah. But I'm not sure there's going to be a better women's basketball team or game this entire week than the one we're watching right here today at the McCarthy Athletic Center. So far, this has just been everything that you could want. Another turnover. Number nine, Kaylin Kaylee. Zags up by nine. And a foul called. Oh, Juku. I think what you're going to And did I just reverse the trunk, sisters, yeah, you on did. that call? <laughs> it's all right. I had it. I had the problem earlier, too. That's Ooh, Kaylee. Lee. This Lee is Kaylee. There you go. <laughs> hey, listen, it's not so easy, those watching at home. Trust me. I know. They are identical. They could have put a little more separation in the numbers to make it easier. No, no, no. And then, of course, the long ponytail covers up part of that four on Lynn's jersey. But And a jump. This is a deep three. Battle for the rebound. And it goes out of play off of a zag. Stanford basketball. And 20 on the shot clock. And we'll just kind of talk about these seniors. The Trongs parents in the house able to watch them down at that Houston tournament. And then we're going to see them at Rice next. And then... Brings parents in the house, recognizing what a big game this is and an, an opportunity to watch their 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 daughters play. Yeah. Ball was kicked. So again, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Up jump will inbound it. Erie off in the catch. Ogden the three. Bingo. Courtney Ogden from downtown. Stanford now five of nine from behind the line. And there's a foul on the catch by Hannah Jump. And that is her first personal. And four on Stanford this quarter. Maxwell Egypt in for Stokes. Well, you look right here. Ogden knocking it down. Stanford's getting great production from their bench. 15 points compared to Gonzaga's just four. Kaitlin Trung also out of the game. Egypt, what a catch. Trying to throw it up there, a wild shot. Erie often will lead the break for Stanford. The polo, Dimitri three way off. Erie often up high for the rebound. Put back, will go. Kiki Erie often now with four. And Stanford to within four, 40 to 36. Kaylee Tron. Kept Lapolo on her hip, but missed the shot. Outlet. Ogden will try to cut into this four-point Gonzaga advantage. Dimitri, ball kicked by Esther Little. 20 on the shot clock, 218 to play in this opening half. And right now, you're Lisa Fortier. You want your team to finish this half with momentum. Yeah. You know yeah. Tara Vanderveer will make changes at halftime. Oh, yeah. Stanford will come out with a different pace and a different feel in that second half. Yeah, and I think just part of that is taking care of the ball, continuing to work your offense, and getting good looks. Airy often skip pass Ogden. She just hit one. That one's off. Erie often long, runs down the long rebound. So now that's a couple of offensive boards there that Erie often has gotten. And a foul against Gonzaga. And this will go on Stokes. And that is her first personal. That's four on GU this quarter.
Lisa Fortier into a, a deep conversation with one of the officials. <laughs> and a jump again to inbound it for Stanford. Lapolo with the basketball. Under two to play in this opening half. Number three, Stanford Gonzaga. Ogden to the post. Iriafin the catch. Maxwell trying to tie her up. Iriafin ripped it away. Got a shot away. Tipped out. Jump will run it down. Another chance for Stanford. But look at the attention Iriafin uh, draws. There was three white jerseys around her. In and out. Another three by Courtney Ogden. Yeah, Ogden making big threes for the Cardinal right now. It's a one-point game. Kaylee Trong, Egypt trying to fight through Dimitri. Here's Stokes. We'll give it up to Brenda Maxwell. Hand right in her face. 12 on the clock. Maxwell the drive and a chance for three. Brenda Maxwell. Brenda with 15. Her first free throw to come. She's 6 of 10 from the floor. You gotta love it. Look at the energy. Look at the enthusiasm, intensity on her face after she finishes this play. And look. I don't watch as many women's Gonzaga games as you do, but we don't see Brenna Maxwell do that enough. We know her as a three-point yes. shooter. Yeah. She's got to go to the rim. She's got to keep the defense honest. And yes. You see that right there. Yeah, yeah. And I love that she went to the rim looking to finish and not just drawing the foul, right? 43-39. One minute to play in the opening half. Here's Hannah Jump, Ariopin at the high post. Here's Ogden again looking to shoot the three. That one's long. Ejim fouled over the back by Erie Offen, and that is her second personal foul. Great box out by Yvonne Ejim. And that should get Erie Offen out of the game. I don't believe that. Tara Vandevere wants to allow her to pick up a third with 51.1 second to play. Ejim at the line. Two of two, now three of three today. 13 points. Well, and if you're Gonzaga, you got to like what you've done. You've put two fouls on Brink and two fouls on... Oh, no, excuse me. I thought that that was Erioffen. You got two fouls on Erioffen. I thought there was two on Brink as well, but you've kept them out of the game. You've got them thinking a little bit now. Ogden again. Turned down the three this time. And hits the little mid-range jumper. Ogden, what a spark yes. for Stanford here in the closing moments of the second quarter. Yeah, ten points, four of six shooting and two big threes for them. Ten points in six minutes of action. There is about six seconds differential between the two clocks. This is Kaitlyn Trong. Ejim now will try to get open. Yvonne with the ball. Turns on Dimitri. Got inside. Shot away is short. Good defense there by Stanford. And the Cardinal will have the basketball to close out this opening half. Down by four. Esther Little will come in for Brenna Maxwell. A defensive substitution here. Harrell oh. got all the way inside. Wild shot won't go out of play. And it'll be Stanford's ball or is it it's Gonzaga's ball? It's off of a Cardinal. And Harrell had the Gonzaga defense completely fooled on that little fake. She had a wide open look. And that shot did not get off in time. 45-41. We are at the half in an electric half of basketball. Between number three, Stanford, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Stanford 8 and 0. The Zags 6 and 2. 7 and 2, I'm sorry. And boy, this ball game today with national implications. And we go now to A.J. Howell, who's got Coach Fortier. Coach, you were able to force nine turnovers just in the first half. What can you say about this defense so far? Yeah, I like that we're flying around. Uh, we're, we're, for the most part, I think. Um, defending personnel how we want to. We're helping where we should help. We're uh, crowding the players that we should. There was a stretch there in the end of the first, beginning of the second, where we got a little bit casual with the defense. But for the most part, they're playing really hard. We can check out a little bit better, though. That's defense, too. Yeah. 
What do you need to see out of your team to come out with the win? Um, I think we need to get better on the glass. I think on the other end, we're getting a little impatient. We're forcing some shots. Uh, we haven't got to the end of the shot clock yet. So I think if, if we're a little bit more patient on offense, we're going to get ourselves into some shots that we're likely to knock down. Thank you. Greg, stop. Thanks, AJ. Thanks, Coach. And she's right. Gonzaga's got to do a better job on the glass. They held the advantage till about halfway through that second mm -hmm. quarter, and then Stanford started dominating, and now they have a four-rebound advantage as we go to the half. But it's Gonzaga with a four-point advantage. We're through the first two quarters in Spokane. What a treat it's been. Gonzaga 45, number three Stanford 41. Zags led by Yvonne Egyms 14, Brennan Maxwell's 16. Halftime when we come back. Home. And welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. We're at the half. Greg Heister, Stephanie Hawk, Freeman, trying to catch our breath. <laughs> Gonzaga with a four-point lead, 45-41. Yvonne Ejim, Brenna Maxwell, they've been the offensive punch for Gonzaga. They came to play. They really did. I mean, we've seen them do it pretty much from all over the court. Yvonne Ejim with 14 points, Brenna Maxwell 16 points, but I mean, from in a variety of ways so we can see right here moving without the ball cutting to the rim getting an easy look working on the offensive boards put back we've seen her we'll probably show here running the court getting an open look there for herself as well right here again getting the inside position and a nice tip from a trunk for the easy put back yeah, she was really dominant inside. And then Brenna Maxwell got off to a great rhythm shooting the basketball. Hit a couple of threes, but it really opened up her game all the way around. It really did, yeah. So three for six behind the three-point line, but she's hit the little mid-range. And then she's also had the drive to the rim for the and one. But those three-pointers, I mean, we talked about the release. I mean, she was looking yeah. for a shot. She's hunting for her shot tonight. And you got to expect if Gonzaga is able to hold on and upset the third-ranked team in the country, Maxwell and Egypt have to stay on the floor, and they have to continue this offensive output that, that we saw. It should be known that the last three times that Stanford has been on this floor, Gonzaga has led the game at half. Gonzaga won one of those three games. So they know that Stanford will make some adjustments. They'll be a different team in the third quarter. Zags are going to have to come out and play their best yet. We're at halftime at the McCarthy Athletic Center. 45-41. We've got more when we come back. Thank you, AJ. Thank you, Coach. And we have also noticed that Cameron Brink has not come out of the locker room for Stanford. She went to the locker room prior to the end of that first half. We're being told that she's suffering from an illness of some sort, and unless things dramatically improve, we will not see her this entire second half for Stanford. So obviously a big loss for the Cardinal. And I think if, if Gonzaga wins today, they want to beat Stanford with Cameron Brink yeah, on the floor, right? Absolutely, yeah. You want to beat Stanford at their best. You don't want to see any players out or anything like that. Um, and this also is going to change probably the way Gonzaga looks at the scout now, too. You've worked so so hard focusing in on this but you know we know lisa she's been there seen this before they'll make their adjustments but this does change a lot of what stamper does with that one-two punch and look tara vanderveer one of the greatest if not the oh, greatest yeah. coach in college basketball history she's not going to allow her team no, to use that as no, no, any no, no, sort no, of no. an excuse no. this is stanford yeah. next gal up Kiki Iriofen with two fouls is going to have to have a big second half for Stanford. And if you're Gonzaga, you can't let down, right? Yeah. Because the Cardinal could rally around each other because of this and come out even more fired up. First shot of this half missed by Kaylin Trong. And a foul called. Is that on Hollingsworth? It is yeah. on Hollingsworth, and that is her third personal foul. Just underway in this third quarter, so Eliza Hollingsworth picks up her third. She's going to stay in there right now for GU. Apollo with the catch off the inbound. She'll back it out. Sagna into the corner to Hannah Jump. Ten on the shot clock. Apollo 
looking for anyone. Trying to go to Erie often, but Kaitlin Trong there to deflect it out of play. Seven on the shot clock. Elena Basagna, or Boscana, I'm sorry, will try to get it inbound, and then there's the turnover. The 10th against Stanford, and the defense by jump, tying up Kaylee Trong, and possession favors Stanford. What a defensive play there. Well, Kaylee Trong, we know how well she handles the ball and is able to score, but great hands by jump, getting back after that turnover and getting the ball back to the Cardinal. Brooke Dimitri will throw it in. Lopolo now will bring it up. Courtney Ogden has checked in. Here's Hannah Jump. Quick trigger for the three is long. Maxwell up high. She's fouled by Erie Offen. And that equally a big foul yes. against Stanford. That's her third. And there's Cameron Brink. She's on the end of the bench, yeah. but in her warm-up. Well, we're glad to see her back out on the bench, you know, but still, obviously, it does not look like she will return. Hope she gets better. Agent, big rebound there off the Hollingsworth miss. Kaylin Trong, three is short. Agent tips it to herself in the corner and beats Erie off into it. Kaylee at the elbow. Jump shot, that's off. Long rebound in the corner. Ogden with it for Stanford. Lopolo. Spinning. And now Hannah Jump. Little bump there for from Kaylee Trong. Here he often trying to set the screen. Lopolo goes baseline. Skip to the corner. This is Ogden. Hit a couple of threes in that first half. Two of four. Here he often left hand off the glass. Trying to run down the miss. She's on the floor, got it to Ogden. And there's the shot clock violation. It'll be Gonzaga basketball, turnover number 11 for Stanford. You gotta love the effort by both teams right now. Diving on the floor, trying to give themselves extra possessions. This is fun. And we talked with Coach Vanderveer before the game. This Stanford team out there on the floor, besides Hannah Jump, doesn't have a lot of game time experience. This is still a fairly young team. Especially when you take Brink out of the mix. Hollingsworth. Against Dimitri. Missed it. Trying to get it back. Ejim with it. Here's Maxwell from eight feet. Brenna Maxwell. Two more. She's got 18. Just sticking with it. If it doesn't quite go your way, Gonzaga has been sticking with it. Chasing down the ball and getting themselves those easy looks like that. Very often calling for the ball. What a catch. What a pass. Can't finish. Each of them there to battle her. Oh, Hollingsworth almost picked up her fourth. And Hannah Jump with the left hand on the baseline throws it yeah. in. Did you see that? Oh, man, she's tough. You cannot. That's the one person I would say on the floor right now you do not want to get going. You got Erie off and Jump. You got to stay focused on them. But if you're going to guard Jump, give her the two instead of the three. Yvonne Each of now with 16 points, six of 10, eight rebounds. Zags up by six. You shocked that Hollingsworth is still in there with three? I, a little bit, but you got to recognize this is a more experienced team. These are seniors. These are fifth-year players out there. And 48, Coach 48 is showing that she trusts Hollingsworth out there not to pick up that next foul. Offensive foul called on Brooke Dimitri. Hannah jumped, didn't agree with the call, looked at the official with dismay. Dimitri picks up her first personal. That's two on Stanford here in the third. Gonzaga up by six with the ball. Kaylin Trong, Maude Hybins on the floor for GU, in for Hollingsworth. Hybins with two fouls. Here's Egypt. Oh, Ogden trying to tie her up. Deflection, great play. Lapolo with it for Stanford. And really that started with Dimitri's great footwork defensively, stopping Egypt. And Hannah jump, little runner from 15 feet. Now with nine points, jump nearing double figures. Kaylin Trong. Hyben sets the screen. Trong turned down a 17-footer open. Mismatch inside. 
Ibins. Egypt from 16. Long rebound. Stokes runs it down. A whistle. What's the call here? And that goes against Aguera, a Stanford. That's her first personal. And that is three on Stanford this quarter. If I eat him out, Esther Little will check in. Kaylin Trong trying to get it in. Ibens with the catch. Under six to go, third quarter. Maxwell falls down, missed the shot. Ivan's lost the rebound. It'll be Stanford basketball. Chloe Clardy, number 13, has checked in for Stanford. In our discussion with Coach Vandeveer prior to the game, as the turnover, that's 13 now against Stanford. Three on the way. Kaylin Trong is off. Stokes battles for the rebound. And she is fouled by Brooke Dimitri, number 21. And that'll be two on Dimitri, four on Stanford. But in our discussion with Coach Vandeveer, we asked her, you're the third-ranked team in the country, you're unbeaten at eight, no, how good are you? And her basic answer was, we'll be a lot better later in the season. <laughs> well, that's what you're hoping for as a coach, right? But it goes back to, I think, that Their court, youth, right? Yeah, yeah, that court experience. So you're looking at Ogden, a freshman, a Garrett out there for the freshman. Stokes with a power move, but a Gara wide open at the other end. Stanford stays to within four. You just can't. You've got to hustle back. You cannot forget your assignment defensively after a great offensive play. Kaylin Trong, left hand, all touch and skill. Yeah. Kaylin Trong with six. Did I get that right? No, with seven. Aguera will drive a lot of contact. Foul on GU. 4.54 to play in the third. Gonzaga up by six. Stanford right now without Cameron Brink. In that first half and certainly had an impact with 10 points. She was four of four from the floor. Six rebounds. Gonzaga really had no answers for it. But then, inconspicuously, she was missing. And we heard that she was not feeling well. She's gone to the locker room. I think she's got some nausea, we're being told. And so she is uncertain to return. But we'll see how the game unfolds, mm -hmm. right? If Stanford's within reach in the fourth quarter, who knows? Cameron Brink may Willis read this thing and come back into the game and try to lead her team to victory. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm trying I mean, to build said, suspense. I know you, you're doing a great job. Uh, you know, she's on the bench, so you, you like that. I mean, yeah. you like the fact that she's well enough to sit back on the bench, but you just hate to see this with a player as great as she is, you know, in this atmosphere for this game. You'd like to see her out there, but hopefully, like I said, she gets better real quick, and we'll just see how this game unfolds. And, boy, that's a breakdown there. Agara able to... Take the ball down the baseline and score, 53-49. And you made the point a little earlier, this Stanford team is loaded and deep enough that Gonzaga can't let down because Cameron Brink no. isn't in the game and think that they can win now. Yeah. They have to go out and earn this victory still. Yeah. Because Stanford's going to try to win it. Yeah, they might be young out there. I said, Like I said earlier, Ogden out there, Clark, and Aguera, all freshmen, but they are very, very talented. Kalen Trunk. Look, nobody was really moving, nowhere to go with the ball. She took a little slight step back and then buried it from 25. Clardy the drive. Offensive foul called on Chloe Clardy. It'll be Gonzaga ball, 4-11 to play, up by seven. And it was Stokes who stood in there and took it in the chest. Watch this little step back. Like, boop. Well, it's one of those things, the hands down, too. Yes. Defensive hands down. And if you're a Trong and you see that, you're like, hot dog, I'm hot shooting dog. that. <laughs> Here's Hybins. Aguera there defensively. Skipped to Maxwell. 12-foot jump shot rattles in. And Brenna Maxwell now with 20. I love that we're seeing more of that mid-range pull-up game from Maxwell. 
catch inside by Iriop and did they get E. Jim here? Yes, they did. Yvonne Egypt picks up her second personal. And there's still plenty of time in this game, but I want to compliment Yvonne for staying out of foul trouble. Really tough assignments defensively, and she struggled with getting in foul trouble in some of the games this season so far, and she's had to sit quite a bit of time on the bench, and she's been able to keep herself in the game. And the official stat keeper over there a little quicker than I am. Just one foul on Yvonne Egypt. Iriofen at Hybens. And she pins the foul on Maud Hybens, who looks at the official like, what can I do? I no. went straight up. That is a force. I mean, Kiki yes. just was determined on that post move. Kiki Iriofen has probably already wrapped up the most improved player in the country. Mm -hmm. Last year, she averaged 6.7 points a game, 3.8 rebounds as a sophomore. Now as a junior, it's 18 points a game, 10.4 rebounds, and she's 20 to 27 coming in from the free throw line. She's looking at a first-team All-Pac-12 type yeah. performance so far this year. So athletic. She's got a great face-up game. I really like that as part of her game as well. And like I said earlier in the broadcast, she does a really great job of establishing, getting her position down low early and then continuing to work, move her feet, and get those looks. Very often, though, with just oh. five points, and Kiki called for the personal foul. And that is four on Kiki Iriopin. My goodness, I thought Yvonne's snapped in two. She went so backwards. Look at this. But this is a good call. Watch Kiki get yep. up under her. Yep. Kind of moved yep. her hips and got yep. up under yep. Yvonne. And now Stanford's in real trouble with Cameron Brink out of the game. Kiki Iriopin with four fouls. And Yvonne Ejim with 17 points and right now beginning to dominate the game inside. And you can feel the energy in this building. The student section up on their feet. Offensive foul on Lapolo. Esther Little coming up with another big defensive play here for the Zags. Timeout Stanford. Zags with their largest lead of the game. 61 53 18 to go in the third 6,000 strong on their feet and really excited well as you might imagine a lot of energy in this building right now long way to go 318 to go in the third but Gonzaga now with their largest lead of this game against the third ranked Stanford Cardinal at 61 50 Greg Heister, Stephanie Hawk, Freeman, H.J. Howell, courtside for this one. These two teams, the 15th meeting. Stanford has won 12 of the first 14. Gonzaga trying to earn their third victory against Stanford here this afternoon. It would be their second victory in Spokane. They actually did beat Stanford down on their home floor. Here's Little. Kaylin Trong. Hyben battling for the rebound. Saved by Egypt. Got it to Little somehow. And another chance for the Zags. Under three to play in the third. Hybens. Egypt. High low. Catch and finish. Without Erie off and without Brink. Stanford not going to be able to match up well inside. Here's a Guerra. Kick out. Ogden. Stanford needs a three, and there it is. Courtney Ogden, the freshman from Atlanta from downtown. And that is the third big three by Ogden that she has made today here. She has really had some timely threes. Maxwell. Boy, she doesn't need much space, does she? Bruna Maxwell with 23 points, four of seven. Gonzaga now up by 13. Aguera going to work. Beat Egypt. And Aguera with six. And that quiets the crowd for the moment. Little left wide open. Drives. Got it to Hybens. Tough catch. And the finish goes. Hybens with six. 
Aguera and Maxwell, a collision at the other end. No fouls. It'll be stand. Oh, there was a foul. And it's on Brenna Maxwell. I'd like another look at that. Don't both players have an opportunity at the ball? Eliza Hollingsworth will come in for GU with three personal fouls. Kaylin Trong to the bench. Kaylee on the floor. Tally Stokes back in there for GU as well. First free throw up and good. Here's a look. Bang, bang, play. Foul, I guess, on Brenna Maxwell. Nagara's done a nice job of running the floor for the Cardinal, and she's one that you don't want to send to the free throw line again. I didn't want to say anything before, but she's shooting 95%. <laughs> I, 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 I and wait she until came afterwards. In 20 and 21. <laughs> yeah. Here's Little. Yes, they're not interested in shooting the three. Here's Ejim. Eight on the shot clock. Hollingsworth will load up and bury the three. Eliza with seven. Gonzaga now leading by 14. Hannah jumped to the corner. This is Lapolo. Here's Ogden. Again, the launch off Ejim with her 11th rebound. E Yvonne Ejim with another double double. And let's talk about Eliza sitting on the bench with those fouls for quite a little while. Comes out and hits the three. It should be no surprise. She shoots 35% behind the line there. This has been fun. Gonzaga has had all their players pretty much playing within their role. And, you know, we've had players like Esther Little out there. Oh, my. You can't let that happen. Kaylee Trong left wide open from the corner. And just to finish that, like Esther Little, she's not going to blow up stats-wise, but defensively, she has been so big for this team. Ogden into the corner. Lapolo oh. got all the way in. Hollingsworth blocked the shot, grabbed the rebound. Gonzaga will play for one. Up by 17 with the ball. Hollingsworth, another three. Bang! Eliza Hollingsworth! Here's Hannah Jump, didn't get it off in time. Gonzaga leading number three, Stanford by 20. Seventy-seven, fifty-seven. We'll go to the fourth when we come back. Brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union, your financial success fan club. They go to Cal next, and then at Rice, Arizona, New Mexico. There's some tough tests ahead for GU. But I tell you what, scouting report going to start to change. When teams look at this one and look, this has been a complete effort by Gonzaga. They yes. have, they have shot the three well. They have dominated the inside. They've executed and maybe more importantly, they defended well. They've created these 15 turnovers. Now, Stanford, yeah. to their credit, they've shot the ball well 54.8% yes, yeah. without Cameron Brink, but they're down by 20. Well, off of those 15 points, Gonzaga has turned that into 19, just compared to five turnovers for Gonzaga and four points off of those for Stanford. It's the difference in the game. Yeah. Here's Little. That's off Stokes' hand. Gonzaga with their sixth turnover. And again, that third quarter I thought started off a little, a little sluggish, both teams, but Gonzaga doubled up. Stanford 16 to 32 and really like you said Greg it was because of the team effort everybody played within themselves as a team all right let's go to AJ Howe guys I had my head in the huddle a little bit and if you know anything about head coach Fortier she's going to start talking about defense before anything else talking about helping and once again that's just always her focus but offensively they were really saying we gotta make sure that the Cardinal come get us we want them to pressure. They want that momentum. I think that's what's been working for the Zach so far, guys. Thanks, AJ. Well, and I think it's the image of AJ sticking her head in the <laughs> huddle today. That's, she'll go to any length to get the story. One of the best. Yes. Uh, you know, you got to 
if you're Gonzaga, you do. You want them to come at you so that your players can get downhill, start making and creating, making that defense, make decisions because they have so many playmakers out here. Offensively, I don't think it was a question whether Gonzaga could put up enough numbers going into this game. I think it was the defensive question mark and so far they like i said they've stuck to the scout they've done a really good job um, overall sticking to that no look pass hollingsworth can't finish and it should be pointed out in the third quarter gonzaga had the lead but when kiki iriapa yes. picked up her fourth personal foul gonzaga really extended that lead she's back in there yeah. with her four fouls now and right away goes to work and scores she's got nine yeah and i think you gotta keep putting pressure on Erie often and here you can see Stanford picking it up but the luxury of Gonzaga they've got both Trong twins out there very experienced ball handlers and Kay Lee fouled by Clardy and that is four now by number 13 Chloe Clardy the freshman from Conway Arkansas by the way Chloe the first player ever recruited yeah. from the state of Arkansas by Stanford Two-time Gatorade Arkansas Player of the Year. Brenda Maxwell. It's really hard to believe that a player in the state of Arkansas mm -hmm. can get away from the SEC and come all the way to the West Coast. It just goes to show you how players want to play for Coach Vanderbilt. Yeah. Play for the legend. Yeah. And look. You know, I've been doing this a long time, and every time I remember asking, asking Coach Few young in his career, every time he coached against the legend. And then you wake up one day and you realize, wait a minute, Coach Few's kind of a legend too. And so I don't, you know, what Coach Fortier and, and her staff have done now over her tenure as the head coach, like she's also starting to creep in on that status. So I don't want to ask her what's it like to coach against a Coach Vanderveer because – you know, although Coach Vanderveer is the greatest and before she's all said and done will be the winningest coach, men yeah. or women, on the college basketball circuit. But Coach Fortier is now starting to really stack up the victories and create her own legacy. Absolutely. You know, WCC uh, Coach of the Year four times, um, nine 20 plus wins. You're absolutely spot on. 79 63, 808. Is Gonzaga on the way to the greatest victory in program history? It's possible. We'll talk about it when we come back. Gonzaga Hoops Play of the Game brought to you by MultiCare Health System. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. I was reading. I didn't see it. Break it down for us, partner. <laughs> all right. The feed down low to Yvonne for Egypt. Here we Another go. Look. There you go, partner. All right. Lynn, down low to Yvonne. Tough play for Yvonne, but I think the biggest piece of that was it was the fourth foul yes. on Kiki Geary often and it put her on the bench and that's when Gonzaga really exploded. Yeah they extended I don't know what the lead was then may have been around 10 but that lead really grew when Erie often went to the bench and Stanford had no option for Gonzaga on that post interior defense and again the story Cameron Brink has not played at all in the second half. Played 12 minutes of the first half. Scored 10 points, 6 rebounds. But you can tell she's still not feeling well over there on the bench for Stanford. It's doubtful that she will now return to the team down 79-63. That's one of the best players, if not the best player in the country. Doesn't get the publicity that a Caitlin Clark and the others get because they play on the other side of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, when you look at Cameron Brink and her numbers and what she's done in her career, that's as good as anybody in the country. And we're not just talking about offensively either. You're talking about the WBCA Defensive Player of the Year. I mean, she's a blocking machine. Her length just inside changing shots of their opponents. And you could tell in our, our pregame conversation with Coach Vanderveer, she has a lot of respect yeah. for this Gonzaga program and what yes. Lisa Fortier and her staff have done. Um, she knows that if we don't come in here and play well, we can lose. Gonzaga beat him in 2018. Well, it's like you said earlier, 
Coach Vanderveer said, you know, this is a well-oiled machine. She talked about, she just continually praised Coach Fortier with how well Gonzaga executes and how smart they are. And then praised Lisa for her scheduling. Like, Lisa wants to go out and play these big yeah. games, you know, to get the get her team this experience. And, um, I, I mean, I know I'm not the only one grateful that these two teams continue it's great for us. this matchup. Yeah. This building is full. These fans are excited. For my money, the best program, certainly this side of the Mississippi and women's college basketball in Spokane this afternoon to play a game. That last foul on Eliza Hollingsworth, that's her fourth. She goes to the bench. Erie often one of two from the line. Kiki with ten points. Now four of six from the free throw line. Caitlin Prong with it, 79-64. Here's our score, 725 to play. Brenna Maxwell. Lardy's got to keep an eye. Brenna doesn't need much space. I told you. From the free throw line. She is finding her spots. I mean, she, watch her eyes. She is watching where her feet are when she's coming off screens, and she is looking for it. Whatever the defense is giving her, she is taking. Kaylee Trong will bend the foul there. Actually, fouled Hannah Jump. So Jump will go to the free throw line. And a jump, as you might expect, a good free throw shooter. Uh, this jinxer came in four of five, 80 percent. But that kind of explains what kind of player she is. Mm-hmm. Just five free throws on the season, coming in one or two here. Yeah, she's your shooter, right? She's not going to go in and draw a lot of contact and get herself to the line. Kaylee to Kaylin, home run ball, Hybens the catch, left hand goes. Boy, that's a catch and finish there by Vaughn Hybens. That was special. Jump, missed the runner. Gonzaga running. Kaylin, Maxwell three. Clardy the rebound, she'll run. Clardy down the lane. Tied up but foul by Kaylin Drong. Fans don't like the call. 6.38 to go. Ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, this is an unbeaten Stanford team. They're 8 and 0 already with victories against Indiana, Florida State, Duke. And Gonzaga has him on the ropes. 6.38 to go. Cameron Brink not on the floor. Kiki Iriopin with four personal fouls. Gonzaga shooting 53% for the game. They've turned Stanford over 15 times. They've taken it to the Stanford Cardinal today. Kaylin Trong's three is off. Clardy, uh uh-oh, is that Maxwell on the floor holding her right ankle? Dimitri, here's Clardy. This is where you guys scramble defensively. Nice job by E. Jim. And now Gonzaga needs a timeout. And Brenna Maxwell having a hard time walking on that right leg. Yeah, that's a that's an ankle. Brenna with 27 points, 10 of 16, 4 of 8 from 3, 2 rebounds. She's the player of the game. And that is a sight that Lisa Fortier does not want to see. No. Brenna Maxwell limping off the floor. Well, yeah, you got Brenna Maxwell now with an ankle. Liza Hollingsworth, 4 fouls. Egypt, the drive left hand. Yvonne, 21 points. And Yvonne, it's Maxwell, I'm sorry, partner, but Maxwell going to the locker room. Yeah, no, that's all right. And Yvonne's face up game, too, is so impressive, so explosive, and just patient, really. I mean, look at this game. Look at how tough this game is. Yvonne is playing with a tissue in her nose. <laughs> and she just blocked Yuri off and shot. And, Zach's got to the loose ball. Caitlin Trong in transition. Skip, Stokes, wide open three, well long. She put enough energy into it. And now Lapolo. Hannah Jump, catch and shoot, bingo. Hannah Jump with 13. Can't lose her. 
if she's your assignment, you stick to her like glue. Hannah Jump is too sharp of a shooter. Stanford won't give up. No. They're down by 17. Ejim at the high post. Will drive on Erie off and oh. left it. Hybens. She drew Dimitri over and left Hybens wide open. Put right. her at the point. Great Put mission. Yvonne at the point. <laughs> She's like, Coach, I'm a point guard. Dishing out the assist. Yes. Dimitri backing up to get to the corner. Hybens right there. Erie off and skip. Harrell's three. That's off. Erie off and had the rebound. Stokes knocked to the floor. It'll be Gonzaga ball. But again, did you see how many white jerseys were around Erie often? It is not easy. Kaylee Trong, skip to the corner. Stokes, mid-range off. Kaylin Trong trying to dig it out. Dimitri picked it up. Four minutes to play in Spokane. And a whistle and a timeout. Tara Vanderveer. 87-68. And I can tell you, 6,000 Zag fans in here came here hoping today that Gonzaga could somehow find a way to beat number three Stanford. They were all hoping to see a victory. There's not a person in here that thought Gonzaga would be up 87-68, four minutes to play. We've seen them play competitively, but not this margin uh, before. This is tremendous play. I mean, you look at Coach Fortier's team. They're, they've been playing with each other for so many years. You've got seniors. You've got fifth-year returners. Um, they have been playing and executing this game plan together. They have been on the same page. They are finding each other. How fun is this? I mean, the assists. Right, knocking down the open shots. Yeah, let's go to AJ House. She's got more on what a victory or a loss would mean. Yeah, head coach Lisa Fortier said, you know, at the end of the day, this might just be another close game. They've already had a few on their schedule, but a lot of times when it comes to March, the Zags and the Cardinal are paired up together, and if it's not them, it's going to be someone like them. So it's always good preparation. Greg, Steph. Thanks, AJ and Dimitri. Buries the three. We're going to see a lot of threes down the stretch now for Stanford. Mm -hmm. Dimitri, a 30% shooter from downtown. Wasted no time in getting that shot off. And now Gonzaga trying to take some time off the clock. Eight on the shot clock. Hybens the three. Oh, oh. They're all going for Gonzaga today. They're 10 of 23. She will put it up. Mott now is 5 for 7 on the season, so don't count her out. She wants a little piece of that three-point action. She just took it. And a foul called on Maud Hybens. Another look at what Maud just did. Catch it, shoot. <laughs> Talk about stretching that defense out. Never doubt it. Never doubt it. Always going in, right? <laughs> yep. Brooke Dimitri at the free throw line, a junior from Foothill, California. 4.6 points a game, 5.3 rebounds. She's got eight points today, four rebounds, two assists. Fans behind that hoop, a lot of students here. More students, I think, at this game than I've ever seen ever. I think this for a is, women's game. This is the largest student crowd. 3.05 to play. Hybens. Here's Kaylee Trong. Hollingsworth. Kaylin hunting a shot. 10 on the shot clock. Kaylee Hollingsworth open on the top. Four on the shot clock. Deep three on the way. Off from Kaylee. Stokes over Lapolo with the rebound. Stokes. I love her effort and her energy. She goes out there, she'll battle, she'll bang. She's got great strength. Kaylin, corner. Stokes from 15. Rimmed out. Put back goes. <laughs> 92-71.
and Mont Hyvins. Nice work today. Getting out there and just finishing around the rim. Brenna Maxwell out of the locker room. <laughs> She'll be checking back in. Foul called. Is that on Hollingsworth? It is. That's her fifth. Her day is done. But she'll re be replaced by Yvonne Egypt. And here comes Brenna Maxwell. Got that ankle wrapped up, I'm sure. There's still a, a slight limp. But she's finishing this baby. What'd you say? She's got a little hockey in her? <laughs> she's got a lot of, a lot no, of no, hockey. No, no, oh. no. She's got a lot of okay, hockey in her. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> hey, and give Eliza Hollingsworth all the credit. Ten points. You know, she had a tough tough assignment guarding those posts inside today um, great work you know let's look at here three for seven two for three behind the three-point line Ninety-two, seventy-two. the tag has a chance for a hundred are you kidding well not the first time they've scored a hundred this this year, 102 points against Liberty. Against who? Liberty. Against who? Uh, Liberty. This is Stanford. <laughs> Little different scenario, right? 94-72. Agara, quick burst wow. and finish. Great explosiveness. Here's Hybens. I think I can say it now. What was considered Gonzaga's biggest victory a year ago was against mm -hmm. number six, Louisville. Mm -hmm. This would be the largest victory in program history. A win today against number three, Stanford offensive foul called there on Stokes. What do you think about that, Bert? Awesome. Yeah, it's crazy. This has been awesome. The atmosphere, both teams competing. Um, obviously not the showing the Cardinal wanted to show, but... Coach Vandeveer will take this as a learning experience and, like you said, continue to improve. Big rebound by Aguera, but under a minute to go. Her putback goes. It's 94-76. And if you're Gonzaga, you take this also as a learning experience as to what you can do when you put it all together as a team. Now the fans are going to give them their due, and we will too. Under 30 to play. Egypt, the finish. The fans giving them all the respect they're due. Clardy, the finish at the other end, 15.1 to go. Hybins with the basketball, under 10 to go. Brenna Maxwell with it, 27 points. Gonzaga with the largest victory in program history. They just took down number three, Stanford. 96-78 the final. Wow. out there battling today. Brenna Maxwell, 27 points. Yvonne Egypt, 25 points. And all five zags in double digits. A true team effort. I was really impressed with the execution of the game plan. They were the more physical team. And they certainly executed the game of basketball better than Stanford did this afternoon. They set the tone from the very beginning. I mean, look at these numbers. They shot almost 54%, 42 behind the three-point line, 100% from the free throw line, only seven turnovers. And, Greg, they won the battle of the boards by two. They did. Brenna Maxwell, 27 points, 4 of 8 from downtown. 
Yvonne Egypt, 25 points, 12 rebounds, a 10 of 15 shooting. Okay, time to announce the Knights player of the game presented by A to Z Rental, no job too big or small. Eight convenient locations will rent you anything. A to Z Rental. Let's go to A.J. Howell now with our A to Z Rental player of the game. Player of the game, listen, you've seen Stanford so many times from your days back in the Pac-12, and you still managed to have a career-high 27 points against them. What was clicking for you? Honestly, God is good. Our whole team is playing. Um, Stanford's a great team. Our coach put together a great game plan for them, and we executed. I think that was the best defense we've had all season, and um, I'm just super proud of them. It was such a fun game. Part of the biggest win in program history. What does that mean to you? It means everything. It's so cool to have. You know, we got a lot of fifth years, a lot of seniors here, and we want. We're, we're glad we left our mark here at least, and we're not done yet. And <laughs> here goes that. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Congrats on the win. Thank you, AJ. Brennan Maxwell. Let me say it again. 27 points on mm -hmm. 10 of 16 shooting, four of eight from three, three of three from the free throw line. Of course, AJ talking. About